So the next problem that we want to look at is area. Okay. So we'll be given a polar curve, right? We'll be given r is equal to f of theta, and theta is going to be bounded by a couple of angles, alpha, beta. Often 0 to 2 pi or 0 to pi, something like that, but could be anything. We want to calculate the area. So there are, there are two ways that you can do this. Right, so imagine, imagine we've got this piece of polar curve. Okay? So we have something like this, for example. Okay? So here's theta is equal to alpha up here. Theta is equal to beta, and here is your r is equal to f of theta. Okay? And it's a, it's a curious thing because we're actually, you know, we're, we're describing the curve in terms of polar coordinates, right? But we're plotting it in terms of rectangular coordinates. We're still in the usual xy Cartesian plane. So there are, there are sort of two schools of thought for how you should calculate the area of this curve, right? Um, one option that you could do, and we're not going to follow this up, but I want to mention that it's a possibility, and it's, it's an interesting thing to think about the comparison between the two. Uh, option A is you say, okay, well, x is equal to f of theta cos theta, y is equal to f of theta sine theta. And our area is essentially, right, it's essentially the integral, you know, from like x equals a to x equals b of y dx. But then you do a change of variables. So you let y equal to f of theta sine theta, you let x equal to f of theta cos theta, you do this change of variables, um, and you get alpha, you get beta, you get f of theta sine theta, and then you get the derivative here. So you're going to get, you know, I mean, you got to do product rule for this. Maybe that's why people don't like doing it this way. f prime of theta cos theta minus f of theta sine theta, d theta. And the other thing you find is that for the usual, you know, counterclockwise orientation that we do, you actually need a minus sign out front of this whole thing. So this works, and it gets you the answer, but it's an awfully complicated formula. Um, and the other thing you think about it is it's actually not super well adapted to this curve, because what you're really doing is still that, you know, area under a rectangle. You're still doing you're still doing rectangles like this. And that does mean that you're including, you know, this, this bit here, um, which maybe you don't necessarily want. So rectangles aren't actually the right thing, right? This is not the way to go if you're finding area for a polar curve. Um, what you really want to do are pi wedges, right? You want to go like this. You want to go out, out like that, right? So here would be some theta is some theta naught. And this would be theta naught plus delta theta. Okay? And so you can play around with that and you can say, well look, you know, I know I know what the area for a wedge of a circle is, right? Um, the the area for the wedge of a circle is is one half r squared delta theta, right? Now, r is not constant here, but we do the usual argument that if, if delta theta is small enough, uh, then the change in f of theta from here to there is, is sufficiently small that we can ignore it. And so we get, you know, in the, in the limit, we do the usual sort of limiting sort of differential approximation, and we get something that looks like 1 half r squared d theta, where, of course, r is just f of theta. So we get a much nicer, this is our option B, I suppose. We get a much nicer formula for the area that's better adapted 
to polar coordinates. One half f of theta squared times d theta. Okay, so that's the area formula that we're going to use. Um, so we'll do uh, we'll do a couple of examples using that area formula, and then we're going to of course look at the usual complication, right? Just like with rectangular curves, you might want to calculate area between polar curves. And also, just like for rectangular curves, if you're trying to find area between curves, well, you need to be able to find intersections. And here's where it's good to have sat down and looked at that gallery of polar curves and get some idea of what they all look like so you can plot them. So you can sort of eyeball where those intersections are going to happen, and then you can use trig to actually find them. Okay. Um, we'll see that in the examples coming up.